told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Welcome to today's edition of Just the Truth. I'm Joey Hudson. Glad to have you join me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. We have a lot to talk talk about on this uh, edition. Leaked NSA documents reveal that a massive woke glossary pushing cr- critical race theory and gender ideology at the agency, keep in mind, that is responsible for monitoring threats both foreign and domestic, for the U.S. US military. Talk about going woke. They have a woke glossary of terms that you should and should not use. We'll be diving into that. Also, as Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas defended the Biden administration's border policies in testimony before the House committee this week, literally hundreds of illegal immigrants were crossing the Rio Grande as he was on the stand using ropes to help them cross the treacherous river as he claimed the border was secure. Also, once again, with less than 48 hours until the federal government was set to run out of money, the Senate approved a house pass stopgap spending bill, another continuing resolution to prevent a government shutdown this week. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639 is how you can comment on today's show. You can leave a voice message. You can send me a quick text on the Truth text line. And as always, your emails are welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Let's get started with a story from the Daily Wire. The National Security Agency, according to the, to the article, and they, they print some, uh, some screenshots to show you exactly what they're looking at, uh, that the NSA is responsible for, uh, again, threats both foreign and domestic, keep you and me safe, that they've created a massive glossary of woke terms for employees ranging from anti-racist to the gender-neutral pronouns of Z and Zer. Are you familiar with those pronouns, Z and Zer? A copy of the NSA's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Glossary, which was obtained and verified by the Daily Wire, shows that the agency now provides definitions for terms such as queer theory and white fragility, as well as its expansive guide to 327 social justice terms that blame white Europeans for engaging in settler colonialism and warn of trans misogyny. (laughs) Some of these words I didn't even know exist. It's a 34-page document published internally in May of 2022, but never released to the public until now, before the Daily Wire's investigation. It pushes blatantly left-wing views on race and sex. It explicitly endorses critical race theory and queer theory, both of which are included as terms in this glossary. Uh, The leaked, unclassified NSA document identifies itself as a, quote, glossary of terms and language commonly used in dialogue regarding diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice. And it cites radical critical race theory educators such as Robin D'Angelo and uh, Ibram X. Kendi. It cites D'Angelo while defining the term white fragility as the state in which even a minimum amount of racial stress becomes intolerable, triggering a range of defensive moves in white people It adds, these behaviors function to reinstate white racial equilibrium. There's also whiteness, which the agency defines as a broad social construction that embraces the white culture, history, ideology, racialization, expressions, experiences, emotions, and behaviors, all in order to reap material, political, economic, and structural benefits for those socially deemed white. Are you you following me on this? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, th- this is just crazy. And, and to think that our tax dollars, money that you and I paid into the federal government, paid somebody to research this and to write this. Now, the agency 
which has been sharply criticized for its its uh, mass surveillance operations on you and me, on American citizens, goes beyond openly endorsing these extreme uh, beliefs of critical race theory with its glossary. It pushes queer theory as an approach that critically deconstructs and challenges binaries such as male and female or heterosexual and homosexual. The DEI glossary goes on to list a whole list of different words associated with queer theory like transmisogyny, which it defines as the intersection of transphobia and misogyny. The pronouns Z and Zer, meanwhile, are noted as gender-neutral pronouns that can be used instead of he and she or his and her, while two-spirit is defined as a Native American term for individuals who identify as both male and female. (laughs) Two-spirit? Z and Zer? Have you ever heard of this? Other terms that that are defined in the glossary include genderqueer, AFAB or AMAB, which means assigned female at birth or assigned male at birth, Latinx, and same-gender same loving, a term that serves as a description for homosexuals who think that terms such as gay and lesbian carry negative connotations. Same-gender loving. There's also the demigender with variations like demi boy and demi girl these are defined as having a partial connection to one or more genders now has our world really lost its mind that a a major organization within our defense department that that, that truly keeps us safe or at least we hope they keep us safe from terrorist activity that they have to have a, a woke glossary of terms. A member of the House Intelligence Committee who has viewed the document says that he was shocked at the level of indoctrination within one of our most powerful military agencies. Representative Mike Waltz, he's a Republican from Florida. He's a combat decorated U.S. Army veteran who fought in the elite Green Berets. He told the Daily Wire, quote, I just can't overemphasize how shocking this is. I'm a member of the Intelligence Committee in the House, and it's an authentic document. Walt said this isn't some kind of diversity document with terms like white fragility and definition of whiteness and Z and Zer in, say, the Small Business Administration. This is the NSA, he said, the National Security Agency, one of the most powerful agencies in the world that the world has ever seen. The glossary also works to undermine the very founding of the United States. It, it blasts blasting America's founders in its definition of settler colonialism. It, it defines it as settler colonialism typically includes oppressive governance and enforcement of codes of superiority before charging examples include white European occupation of land in what is now the United States. While the NSA charges that white Europeans are guilty of colonization, it goes on to define decolonize as a process that requires a recognition of systems of oppression in order to unlearn unlearn values, beliefs, and conceptions that have caused physical, emotional, or mental harm to people through colonization. Now, now how do you unlearn our history? Because that's basically what they're saying. Uh, They go on. White privilege, meanwhile, is defined as an unquestioned and unearned set of advantages, entitlements, benefits, and choices bestowed on people solely because they're white. It adds that white people benefit from societal structuring that prioritizes white people and whiteness and offers an additional definition for the term overprivileged. The NSA adopts one of the core tenets of critical race theory, That is, that racism is institutional and systemic with its definition for white supremacy, and it calls a historically-based, institutionally perpetuated system of exploitation of continents, nations, and people of color by white people and nations of the European continent. 
but the NSA goes on to promote this view more blatantly when it gives definitions for five different types of racism. In the glossary, they have uh, cultural, structural, institutional, individual, and internalized as different forms of racism. The glossary says that institutional racism creates advantages for whites and oppression and disadvantages for people of color. The NSA also claims that structural racism is a, quote, feature of the social, economic, and political systems in which we all exist, calling it the most profound and pervasive form of racism. There's also a definition for the word Eurocentric, which states, Most use this term with a clear awareness of the historic oppressiveness of Eurocentric tendency in the U.S. and European society. The phrase critical race theory is even included on the list itself with references to the intersectionality of race and racism, the marginalization of people of color, and its supposed aim to pose a challenge to dominate ideology. The document also includes a wide array of terms, that promote gender ideology featuring drag queen, drag king, and passing privilege, which explains that there is a variation in the degree which medically and or socially transition people are recognized as their correct gender. doesn't matter what they were born as. They just throw that out. doesn't matter what's on your birth certificate. Uh, They say those who are not gay or trans, meanwhile, are said to have heterosexual privilege. (laughs) So so now, if if we're just plain male or female, we're privileged. Uh, It goes on to, to, to say gender binary is defined as the idea that there are only two genders. It goes on to say this idea is challenged by those who identify as non binary, including gender queer and agender. Honestly, I'm lost here. I, I, I don't know what they're talking about. The, the glossary not only defines words, but it also attempts to steer readers away from terms that are now problematic, they say. The definition of female-bodied, for example, explains that the term is very problematic as it genders bodies non-consensually and plays into the uh, term male-bodied is also included alongside a similar note. Uh, I guess females are not supposed to feel female bodied because of body parts that females typically have. Same thing for males. The definition of gender affirming surgery notes that sex change is an outdated and often offensive term. Also problematic, according to the guide, is the term homosexual. This is not a preferred term, it says. Homosexual males typically prefer the term gay, and homosexual females typically prefer the term lesbian. MTF and FTM are a couple of terms in the glossary. These are abbreviations for those who were assigned as male or female at birth, but then attempted to transition into the opposite sex. But the NSA document extends even further into gender ideology and claims that those two terms are also potentially problematic. Of course, of course they are. It goes on to promote the alternative terms MTM and FTF terms are used to identify as a transgender individual who has medically transitioned and feels their birth sex was never an identity to which they could relate. It continues a person with a birth sex of female may have lived as a female for many years but never really identified as a woman. Pansexual is a word. Pansexual is said to refer to the potential for sexual attractions or romantic love towards people of all gender identities and biological sexes. The document specifies that pansexuality deliberately rejects the gender binary and derives its origin in the transgender movement. Again, I'm lost. Um, Uh, There are also several terms that are associated with grievance politics like microaggression, microinvalidation, sizeism, (laughs) sizeism, which is discrimination against people based upon their perceived or self-perceived body size or shape. But the NSA's document makes it very clear 
that the agency's goal is not merely to advance liberalism, but to push social justice and equity. In fact, liberalism is said to obstruct more progressive political ends. A definition for neoliberalism calls the ideology a substantial subjugation and marginalization of policies and practices informed by the values of social justice and equity. Waltz said defining these woke terms shouldn't be anywhere on the NSA's priority list, especially with national security risks facing the U.S. today. Representative Waltz said it's disturbing that this is what the senior leadership of one of our most critical intelligence agencies is worried about when we literally have the world on fire. Those holding the keys to power, he says, those with the finger on the nuclear button or on incredibly powerful surveillance capabilities are being indoctrinated that our civilian institutions are inherently racist or systematically misogynistic and have a colonist past and therefore are bad, he said. He, uh, He wrapped things up by saying our military is not focused on lethality. They're focused on diversity and climate. That's going to result in our enemies not fearing us and respecting us as they should. And he's right, isn't he? Can you imagine what the Chinese or or the Russians are, are thinking, reading this stuff, R- reading that the NSA is more concerned about pronouns than they are about who could be spying or who could be entering our country? The document is marked, according to the Daily Wire, as unclassified which is a security designation that means the material is not classified, but is not publicly releasable without authorization. I'm not sure how the Daily Wire was able to acquire their copy. The NSA's publicly available diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility site states that diversity and inclusion strategies inform our daily operations and that the agency is actively cultivating relationships with external partners and leveraging those partnerships to increase the diversity of NSA's hiring talent pool. Now, that's what we need. We need to be hiring a bunch of spies who are concerned about their pronouns, that that Z and Zer or whatever. President Biden issued an executive order aimed at creating a, quote, whole of government equity agenda on his first day in office. Remember how he had that stack of executive orders that, that he signed? took him hours to do so. This is one of those uh, that he signed that is wreaking havoc upon our our national security. 864-477-JOEY. What do you think about this? 864-477-5639 is the truth text line. I'd love to get your comments on this one. You can also leave me a quick voice message as well. Uh, send me an email, joey at Joey Hudson. Estamos esta tarde en el río Bravo, aquí en Piedras Negras, donde se registra un cruce masivo de cientos de migrantes. This is a video that was just released this week. Obviously, that's uh, Spanish. The video is following a, a group of illegals who are crossing the Rio Grande. Hundreds of illegals this week on the same day and at the time that Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas defended the Biden administration's border policies in testimony before a House committee. This crossing took place near Eagle Pass, Texas, a location recently visited by Tesla CEO Leon, uh, Elon Musk, you, may rem- you might remember, along with presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, News Nation, Fox News, others reported about it. Mayorkas testified before the House Homeland Security Committee alongside FBI Director Christopher Wray and National Counterterrorism Center Director Christine Abizade, where he defended the Biden administration's policies on the border. He still says that our border is safe, yet as he's sitting there testifying, you This video that was released shows hundreds holding on to a rope as they're crossing this very treacherous part of the Rio Grande River. 
mothers holding their babies while also trying to hold on to this rope. The video was posted on X. It showed the migrants wading across the Rio Grande. Uh, by the way, the number of drownings on the river previously prompted officials in Eagle Pass to request refrigerated trucks to literally store the dead bodies in because funeral homes and morgues were being overwhelmed. Mayorka said during his testimony this week, quote, the department continues to implement a border security strategy focused on enforcement, the expansion of lawful pathways, and agreements with regional partners, he said. The plan has increased the number of law enforcement personnel along the border and expedited removals of non-citizens without a legal basis to remain in the United States thanks to enhanced enforcement processes and historic international agreements. Yes, sure. You buying that? Fox News national correspondent Bill Malugan posted on X, Wow, another massive illegal crossing taking place in Eagle Pass right now? Mayorkas has claimed that the border is not open on multiple occasions. He keeps saying that over and over, including uh, back in the spring at a press conference where he ignored questions from the Daily Caller News Foundation, uh, the, their investigative reporter, Jeannie Terre, who had actual video of these crossings. Alden Cabello, a citizen journalist, posted on X, happening now, Eagle Pass under siege as hundreds storm the Rio Grande. X posterity posted on x happening now hundreds lunge into the rio grande and cross into eagle pass in mass they are crossing by international bridge two where at eon musk and vivek ramaswamy recently visited they write musk visited uh the crossing which is has become an illegal immigration hotspot back at the end of september he posted video of illegal Immigrants being processed by Border Patrol agents. Over 2.45 million illegal immigrants have been encountered at the U.S.-Mexico border during fiscal year 2023, according to data released by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. That followed 2, 2,370-plus thousand encounters in fiscal year 2022 and 1.7 million in 2021. Once again, with less than 48 hours until the federal government was set to run out of money, the Senate approved a House-passed stopgap spending bill, another continuing resolution, to prevent a government shutdown. Details on that in just a moment. First, let me tell you about Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. Are you carrying a little extra weight around your waist? Do you just, do you feel sluggish? Don't have a lot of energy? If you're ready to change your life, if you're ready to get healthy, let me encourage you to call today, Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition, and set up your first consultation, 864-252-4925, or online, you can visit them at myphdweightloss.com. Three years ago, I'm so thankful I met Dr. Ashley Lucas and the team at Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly within just a few months. Three years later, I've been able to maintain that. And that's the key to PhD weight loss and nutrition. It's not a fad diet. It's based on the science and nutrition. You lose the weight and you keep it off. Their maintenance program is amazing. Let me introduce you to Dr. Ashley Lucas and the team at PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. Call them today, 864-252-4925. Again, online, myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. So the Senate this week passed a stopgap spending bill to keep the government funded. Aren't aren't you relieved? Uh, This will keep the government funded until early next year, which will avert another government shutdown that would have kicked in this this coming week. The bill passed 87 to 11 just before midnight on Wednesday, and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer praised it as a, quote, great outcome for the American people. Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado was the only Democrat who voted no. He joined 10 Republicans in voting no. The House first passed a bill uh, earlier in the week, handing new Speaker Mike Johnson a big win. I guess you could call it a win. We'll we'll see. And uh, now heads to President Joe Biden's desk, where he is expected to sign it uh, by noon today. It was Johnson's first major test as Speaker. 
And although the more conservative wing of the GOP caucus voted against the plan, which had uh, the support of Democrats, so far they've held off on ousting him from office like they did Kevin McCarthy just over a month ago. The uh, so-called laddered continue, continuing resolution does not include any spending cuts or any supplemental funding for Israel or Ukraine. And that was part of what the conservatives wanted was some spending cuts. Go back to spending levels of 2022. It did not do that. It kept the same spending levels. Uh, We're told that funding for the four non-controversial agencies and projects, including military construction and veterans affairs, will be extended through January 19th, just days after the Iowa caucuses signaled the start of the 2024 presidential campaign season. Funding for eight others will run through February the 2nd. Democrat Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said prior to the vote, no drama, no delay, no government shutdown. The key reason for Democrats getting on board was that the continuing resolution, again, remains at fiscal year 2023 spending levels, no cuts, which means we're not making any progress. Republicans said they were eager to avoid the risk of a shutdown, which would have closed national parks and disrupted everything from scientific research to financial regulation. It pushes the funding deadline past Christmas after Speaker Mike Johnson insisted he did not want the House to be jammed before the holidays and forced to agree to a year-long spending plan worked up by the Senate. The nearly 50-member House Freedom Caucus came out against the bill before it was put on the floor, arguing that it needed spending cuts The caucus said, while we remain committed to working with Speaker Johnson, we need bold change, and that we do. Hopefully, they will stick to that. Look, just pass a budget. Dig in and stay in Washington till you get it done. Uh, Conservative Republicans insist that Congress must work through 12 single-subject appropriation bills to fund each agency of government rather than continuing to do continuing resolutions or an omnibus that lumps all the funding for all agencies in one big spending bill. Uh, The so-called laddered approach is meant to force negotiations on individual appropriations, we're told. The House would have two months to work through the first four before their funding ran out and an extra two weeks beyond that to work through the last eight. Uh, Speaker Johnson said, so I think everybody can go home. We can come back, reset. We're going to get our plan together. We're going to map out that plan to fight with these principles, with those principles, and we have some great plans and playbook already. Your comments are welcome on the Truth Text Line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. On the Truth Text Line, Jeff writes, look what they got from FedEx amounts to nothing. What a joke, those idiots. I hope they lock them up. Now, Jeff is referencing a story I told you about where a FedEx truck was literally stopped at an intersection and robbed the, the driver was chased away on the truth text line Faye writes glad i found you today online yes americans have lost their way totally most children have no knowledge of the bible as it's not taught in school their parents don't know the bible and children aren't taken to church the school bus going through cross hill is full of children but come sunday they are nowhere near any of our churches we're cutting our throat and don't know it you're right Faye. We've got to get back in church. We've got to get God back into the equation. Our positive encouragement for the day by a texter, how we think shows through in how we act. Attitudes are mirrors of the mind. They reflect thinking. God bless. Thank you for that. Your comments are welcome as well. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Leave a quick voice message. You can send a text and an email, joey at joeyhudson.com. From the email inbox, Thanks for another slam duck this morning, Joey. Good show podcast. Those presidential candidate percentages were very interesting. Regarding Haley, not surprising that she is rising in the polls. I try to observe the candidates without prejudice. And what I see in her on the positive side, not looking at the negatives here, are at least these three things. And the email goes on. Number one, you can't outwork her, which is often true of women. Number two, she has the best conservative message on abortion, which I doubt Republicans in general will get on electable message, even though they've had four years to think about it, and it's really important. And number three, she is a woman, and conservative women 
will start thinking about making the first female in the White House a Republican. Thank you for your email, Jennifer. Again, yours is welcome, Joey at Joey Hudson. Dot com. A couple of breaking news items. Representative George Santos, the Republican from New York, announced yesterday that he will not seek re-election in the wake of a House ethics report. Santos wrote on X, if there was a single ounce of ethics, all caps, in the ethics committee, they would have not released this biased report. The committee went to extraordinary lengths to smear myself and my legal team about me not being forthcoming my legal bill suggests otherwise, he writes. Chairman of the House Ethics Committee, Representative Michael Guest, plans to file a motion to expel Santos later today during the House session, Guest's personal office told the media. The Ethics Committee released a scathing report, as you know, that accused Santos of having used campaign funds for personal purposes and engaged in fraudulent conduct, among other allegations. Guest filing the resolution tees up an expected vote on whether to boot Santos from the House sometime after lawmakers return from the Thanksgiving break on November the 28th. Also breaking, uh, David DePape, the suspect who admitted this week to striking Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer after breaking into his former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's uh, residence in San Francisco last year. He was found guilty of assault and kidnapping Yesterday, a jury convicted DePape of attempted kidnapping of a federal official and assault on the immediate family member of a federal official with intent to retaliate against the official for the performance of their duties. Following the jury's decision, a spokesperson, Aaron Bennett, uh, I'm sorry, Aaron Bennett, said that the Pelosi family is, quote, very grateful for the outpouring of prayers and warm wishes for Mr. Pelosi from so many across the country during this difficult time. Bennett said the former speaker and her family would not comment further on the matter given the ongoing state court proceedings. Do you feel guilty sometimes ordering tap water when dining out with the family? A London restaurant owner is under fire because of comments on the menu designed to persuade diners to order drinks rather than drinking the free tap water. Portions of the day show brought to you by Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Let me talk to you for just a second here about Jeff and Johnny and the whole team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're totally upgrading your kitchen, you don't want to have to wait weeks or sometimes even months to get those appliances, do you? Well, you'll never have to wait at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet slam full of about 1,500 appliances at any given time, you can, in most cases, buy it today use it today. They have expert installation, award-winning service department, and they have extended warranties so that they take care of you well past the sale. That's because you're more than just a credit card swipe to discounted appliance warehouse. Let me encourage you to take the short drive over to Pickens. You can also find them online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. So here's the story from London, and it won't surprise me if other restaurant owners don't possibly... uh, (laughs) Take the same attitude. A London restaurant owner is defending his establishment's menu rules after customers accuse him of guilt tripping them for only ordering tap water. The restaurant owner, Morton Ortwed, told Kennedy News Media, we're not forcing people to buy drinks. They can have free tap water anytime they'd like, he said. Here's the story. Jane Breeds, 27 years old, and her boyfriend, went out to dinner at this exclusive restaurant, Cod London, it's called, a Danish steakhouse in East London. Uh, they ordered their all-you-can-eat roast dinner. The, the couple was prepared to pay the $37 per head for the, uh, for the dinner, but they didn't expect to read what they called a cheeky note on the menu. The Danish restaurant menu read, you can have just tap water, but please remember we're running a restaurant, not a charity. Wink, wink. We need to make money. You know who's running a charity, though? Red Cross is. If you want to have just tap water, we encourage you to donate $1.24 to the Red Cross. Everybody wins. Now, the Breeds, uh, Miss Breed and her boyfriend uh, weren't very happy with this message. Uh, She told Kennedy News Media, when I first saw the menu, I laughed and told my boyfriend that we're not ordering any drinks. The servers brought out their water jug, without any questions after they ordered a jug of water, which the pair appreciated. 
Despite the menu's wild message, the couple said that they got great service and they left a 15% tip of their $74 bill and didn't make a donation. Breeds left another tip on X, though, when she posted, made a point of not ordering drinks at Cod Steakhouse by Liverpool Street after seeing this on the menu. Wild behavior, laugh out loud, and she tweeted a photo of the restaurant's menu. Now, Cod's boss clap back at this customer's post, calling his initiative too much Danish humor for her taste. Ortwed tweeted, thanks for the attention. Tap water is still free. Red Cross donation is optional. Breeds replied back saying, I guarantee that you're turning more people off ordering drinks with your snarky messaging than you are encouraging people to actually order more drinks. Although the Denmark native was frustrated by Breeds' remark, he tried to keep it for professional he said you're the first we've had with a negative comment but we will take it into consideration in our evaluation thank you for your feedback as a red cross ambassador ortweed thought promoting charitable donations would be a win for the nonprofit and for his company to make some profit he said i understand they uh, find it cheeky but to come to a restaurant and have tap water i think it would be nice to also donate something he said that shouldn't be a bad thing so, so what do you think about this? Th- this restaurant owner obviously doesn't want people drinking tap water because it's free. And he's trying to kind of guilt trip you there a bit, you think? Uh, the owner went on to say that the steakhouse wouldn't be able to offer their Sunday special where we're offering all-you-can-eat roast if customers didn't buy drinks and only drank water. Miss Breeds understands Ortwed. Uh, had that he had good intentions behind the charitable request, but thought it was done in a distasteful way, she said. The donation is a nice idea, but I don't think I should be guilt-tripped into donating to charity just because all I wanted to drink was tap water. However, Ortwed, uh, who uh, opened the chain restaurant back in the spring, says he has no plans to change the menu's verbiage. He said there are still some things we need to learn about Danish humor working in the U.K., but I don't think we should change something because one person doesn't agree uh one final note i told you this week about the fedex truck being blocked at an intersection in memphis tennessee while a bunch of thugs literally chased the driver away and broke into the truck stealing the contents people's packages that were being shipped well evidently this has become a trend now the latest a group of thieves had ransacked an amazon delivery van this time as the helpless driver looked on literally stunned during this daylight robbery in Atlanta in the latest string of attacks on delivery trucks. Uh, This was a female driver. She told the police she was delivering a package to the Country Oaks Apartments in Atlanta when she said she left her vehicle unattended running, which is a common habit. You've seen them do that in delivery service trucks. they're, They're trying to get their deliveries done very quickly. She then claimed that at least four men ran up to the truck and stole multiple packages from inside her vehicle. Video captured from a nearby apartment shows that the thieves jumping out of the front of the van, running to the back where the door's already open before hopping back in and filling their arms with packages. The camera then turned to the driver in the middle of her delivery route, who abruptly stopped walking and watched as her truck was ransacked. As they rushed to get into the van, a couple of the thieves slipped and fell to the ground, you can see, before quickly getting up and into the back, but there was no need for haste as no one was around to stop them. It's not known what items were stolen. Investigators are working to figure out the identities of the suspects and determine the circumstances behind the robbery, according to the outlet. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, JoeyHudson.com, JoeyHudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so you can receive our emails with the most up-to-date news. By the way, plan on joining me next week as I sit in for Mike Gallagher. Just download the Mike Gallagher Show app or visit MikeOnline.com. Hope you'll plan to join me next week, Monday through Wednesday from 9 a to 12 noon on the Mike Gallagher Show. Thanks for spending a few minutes of your day with me. Keep your comments coming via the Truth text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639, and keep your emails coming as well. Have a great weekend. We're back on Monday. Until next time, remember, God's got this. He's still in control.